Ladies and gentlemen, federal employees, today we're going to talk about why so many federal employees choose to retire at 62. What are the reasons that push so many people out the door at this age, age of 62? Now, if you're new here, so good to have you. My name is Dallin Haas. I'm a financial planner who serves federal employees every day, and I absolutely Love it, but let's dive in. There's a number of reasons that 62 for federal employees is such a popular retirement age. Now let's dive in. First reason off the top is as a federal employee, there are certain requirements you have to hit if you want to leave the government and get a pension and keep your health insurance. As a normal traditional first federal employee, if you retire at your MRA, minimum retirement age, you have to have 30 years of service to retire at that age. And for most feds, it's going to be around age 57. I'd be right around age 57. If you retire at 60, you have to have 20 years of service to get a pension and to keep health insurance. If you retire at 62 plus, all you need is five years of service to get a pension and keep health insurance potentially. So the, the years of service requirement drops way down at 62, which again is one of the biggest reasons that people retire at 62. For many people who start with the government late in their career, 62 is the earliest they can leave the government and get a full pension with no reductions. That's a huge reason why some people go at 62. Now, what are the other reasons? Well, this is another huge reason that people choose to go at 62, and it is a 10% bonus. So if you've never heard about this before, if you hit age 62 and you have 20 plus years of service at retirement, again, if you retire at 62 and have 20 plus years of service at retirement, then your pension is 10% larger than it otherwise be. You get a 10% bump to your pension that people that retire, let's say at 62 with only five years would get, or 62 and 20, or 57 and 30, they get, their pension is calculated differently than yours. If, again, if you retire 62 with 20 years, you get a 10% bump to how your pension is calculated, which is a huge, huge benefit. And this bump is permanent for life. So again, your pension is calculated with a 10% increase if you go 62 and 20 years, and that's a permanent increase for the rest of your life. I've got whole videos on how to calculate your pension if you want the details on this. Basically, your multiplier goes from 1% to 1.1% if you do hit these criteria. So it's a huge benefit, again, to retire with 62 plus, but again, you have to have at least 20 years at 62 plus to get this 10% bonus. You're eligible to retire with only five years at age 62, but if you want the 10% bonus, you've got to get to 20, 62 and after, okay? Next, another great reason people go at 62 is TSP access. The classical age to access retirement accounts like IRAs, TSP, etc., is 59 and a half. There's some exceptions where some people can get into TSP earlier, but long story short, if you go at 62, you don't have to think about any of those things. You're after, you retire after 59 and a half, you have full access to your TSPs, IRAs, 401ks, all of those things without having to worry about the 10% penalty, basically in, in most situations. So that's another reason 62 is so popular is that they're in their 60s, they're way past 59 and a half, they really don't have to worry about any early penalties from TSP or anything like that, okay? Now, here is another reason, and this is a good reason and a bad reason at the same time to potentially retire at 62, depending on your situation. Long story short, if you retire at 62 or after, you are not going to be eligible for the FERS supplement. Now, if you're not familiar with the first supplement, I've got whole videos on that, but let me give you a short summary. The short summary is this. The first supplement is a payment you can get. It's an extra payment on top of your pension that you can get from retirement until 62. So let's say you retire at 58. You can get this first supplement between 58 and 62. At 62, though, it goes away. It turns into a pumpkin, okay? It goes away. If you retire at 61, you get the first supplement for a year and then it goes away. So if you retire at 62 and after, you don't get the first supplement, okay? However, the first supplement is meant to bridge the gap between retirement and social security. H however, if you retire 62 and beyond, 
you don't, there's not a gap to bridge necessarily because you're already at the age where you can start Social Security itself, right? 62 and beyond, you can start Social Security whenever you'd like, okay? So you don't have to worry about the first supplement and you can start the Social Security right at retirement if you want. Now, there's lots of reasons potentially to not take it right at 62. Sometimes there are good reasons to take it at 62. I've got other videos on that. But long story short, retiring in your 60s, 62 plus, you can take Social Security right away potentially. You don't have to worry about the first supplement stopping or starting, anything like that. It's more simple generally to do retirement planning, not having to worry about the first supplement stopping and starting. If you retire and let's say you get on Social Security right away, it's relatively simple planning on the planning side. Okay, so these are, again, the the biggest reasons people go at 52 or 62, not 52, 62. First, you only need five years of service to be eligible for a pension, health insurance, all of those things at age 62 plus. Next, if you have 20 years at age 62 plus, you get a 10% bonus to your pension, which is a huge deal. You have access to your TSP right away and you don't have to worry about the first supplement. You can take Social Security right away, right there, if you'd like. So, Obviously, every federal employee should retire at 62 plus, right? It's obvious there's so many benefits. Doesn't that make sense, right? Well, I wish it was that simple. Here's the deal. Whenever you're thinking about when you want to retire, it's always a devil's bargain. Meaning, the more you work, the more money you're going to have, right? Your TSB is going to be bigger, your pension is going to be bigger, bigger, Social Security is going to be bigger. Everything is going to be bigger the longer you work. But it also means your retirement is going to be shorter. We're only going to live a certain amount of time and every additional year you work means you're going to have fewer years of your life that are retirement. So it's a balancing act. When do you have enough money to retire the way that you want, right? You don't want to have to go back to work because you didn't plan accordingly, right? But at the same time, leave enough energy and life and years of your life to enjoy in retirement. That is the devil's bargain. That is the the balance we're all trying to find in our lives. How do we enjoy our life while also being prepared for the future? So I hope that's helpful. Hope that gives you some great context of how many benefits there are at 62, but it doesn't make sense for everybody. I hope that's helpful. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys next time.